How's it going guys? Coming at you with a look at this gun right here, which is the SIG P320. Uh, you guys probably already recognize this gun and know a little bit about it. It's been on the market for a little while now. Um, I really anticipated this gun when uh, when SIG announced it, uh, mainly because I'm a, a big respecter of SIG. Uh, they really make really quality firearms, and um, I've always been uh, very partial to them in the accuracy arena. I think that they've always done a really good job. Just for me, I shoot really well with SIGs. I'm very, very accurate with them. Um, I think it's just, you know, the way they're built, they just really are a, a, a very, very good functioning pistol. The biggest drawback, though, however, for me has been that SIG uh, makes that double action, single action. That's kind of their thing. And, you know, I'm really not a fan of that trigger type. And so I've always kind of veered away from SIG, uh, mainly for that reason. However, you know, when the when they announced the P320, I had super high hopes that it was going to be everything that SIG has made in the past, um, yet better. And I really think that they have accomplished that here with the P320. Like I said, I just shoot really, really well with SIGs. I'm very, very accurate, uh, naturally accurate with uh, with SIGs. I think it's just they kind of just go uh, well with my natural point of aim, and I've just done really, really well with them. And I just think it's overall just their their form and function. And like other SIGs, it has that high higher bore axis. And you know, you always got to wonder, is that going to affect how well it shoots? And you know, I've always found, even shooting this one uh, compared to other SIGs, I've always felt that there was a certain cadence uh, that uh, that that they like to be shot at. So if you're doing like rapid fire shooting, um, they tend to be you know they tend to like a certain speed. If you go beyond that speed, uh, they don't do as well. At least for me. And so on rapid fire, there's there's just a certain like speed limit that that you hit, and I think it does have to do with that higher bore axis. Does that really hamper much? Not really. I mean, the speed in which I can shoot this is is more than more than uh, sufficient um, in pretty much any situation I can imagine. That being said, I think that SIGs are like the kings of double tap. Uh, the kings of controlled pairs or double taps. Uh, this gun is really, really easy to actually get on target and to, you know, just do pop, pop, you know, just uh, get that accurate uh, follow-up shot uh, with it. And I think it's just because the the way that SIGs roll um, on their, their, the way the SIGs roll on their recoil, even being a higher bore axis, it still feels very controllable. So the form and function of the compact, which is my favorite size, uh, you know, subcompact, uh, they really just are kind of, SIGs are kind of just a fat gun. You know, if we bring the Glock 19 up to it, Glocks are, are kind of a brick as well. But if you look, um, you know, that SIG definitely has a little bit more width on the, on the Glock. And because of that, they just tend to be a little bit of a chunkier gun. Now, I don't ever anticipate buying a subcompact version of this because really I feel that um, you know the width makes it a, a difficult gun to conceal anyways and I think there's better options for conceal for concealed carry however I think that you know the compact version which is what this is this one is a compact version with the medium uh, grip circumference okay and we'll talk a little bit a little bit about that as, as it goes on but but I really think that the compact size pistols are really the best most versatile pistols you know that Glock 19 again uh, being probably uh, the the gold standard of pistol sizes when it comes to compacts if we line up the slides with each other the Glock has just a tad bit longer slide but we have a beaver tail here on the back of the SIG and so it makes up for for it in overall length you'll see that uh, they're very, very similar in size. And you know, this is probably my favorite size gun. Um, I think that uh, that this tends to be the most versatile size. Could you conceal carry this gun? Absolutely. You absolutely could. However, I don't anticipate a lot of people doing that just because of the thickness of, of the gun. You know, can you do it? Yeah, but you can also do a Glock 19. And you know, I feel that a Glock 19 is a bit on the hard side to 
to conceal. I do conceal this gun. This is one of my, my guns that, that goes through the conceal carry um, rotation, if you will. But, uh, but I think that the compact size pistols, even the Glock 19, are really, really hard to conceal. And I don't anticipate uh, you really doing a lot of concealed carry with it. The finish, the slide finish is a nitron finish is what they call it, I believe. Uh, it's just a, it's like a melanite. It's a, it's a nitrite uh, finish, really hard finish. Very, very nice um, standard melaniting nitrite uh, finishing. Um, this one has the, the Glock night sights, which are fantastic night sights. Very, very nice. The one thing I will say is there's quite a bit of air in between the front and the rear of these sights, which I don't mind necessarily, um, and it didn't seem to hamper my, my ability or my accuracy with it. Uh, so I really, really like the sights. I also like that they have that nice little lip for one-handed uh, manipulation. So, you know, they're really, really nice quality uh, night sights there. The magazines are super well made, guys. Um, they're lightweight, okay? That's one of the first things that you'll notice is they didn't use really, really heavy gauge steel, which I like. I don't like really, really heavy magazines. It just it just added weight that's not necessary. And I think that uh, they couldn't really have done a much better job uh, with, with the magazines as they did. It, they remind me a lot of the magazines on the M&P series, which I really, really like as well. Probably my all-time favorite uh, metal mags is those M&P mags. Uh, these are are right up there with them. 15 round magazines are right on for this size, so that's really, really nice. The takedown procedure is super easy. Um, all you do is lock the slide to the rear. We'll take the magazine out. Um, you're gonna just flip this uh, lever all the way to the back, and then you let it down, and you can take it right off. You don't have to pull the trigger like you do on a Glock or anything like that, or on an M&P, uh, nice, and, nice and easy. Here's some of the uh, the internals, the looks. You can see lightning cuts uh, kind of there. Uh, we'll take the uh, recoil, which is dual capture recoil spring out. You know, typical uh, browning, on, uh, browning action there. And uh, here we are. You can see there's a lightning cut there in the front. Very, very nice. You know, typical SIG machining and, and quality there for sure. Um, here's a look at the internal of the frame. You can see it's a little bit dirty in the back. I uh, noticed that it does accumulate a lot of, of uh, grime back here. You know, most guns do, uh, but I just kind of noticed that, that this one's had, you know, quite a bit more gunk. And I don't know if it's just because there's a lot of grease. This is uh, the, the, the grease still from the factory. Um, this, hasn't been, this hasn't been clean since we started shooting with it. So um, I think that's what's accumulating a lot of the dirt there. But uh, so what's interesting about this gun is that uh, the polymer frame that you see here is entirely uh, interchangeable. So you can you can buy like the FDE uh, version of this. You can buy a uh, different uh, circumference on the grip. Like I said before, I mentioned before that this was the compact, whoa. Like I mentioned before, this is the compact medium frame. You can also buy a large and a small frame. And all you do is you remove uh, this uh, takedown lever right here. Just take that right out. And then what you can do is you just lift the entire internals of this out in one piece. The metal components that you see right here are the firearm. Okay, they're the serialized, serialized portion of the gun. The frame, the slide, everything else is, uh, you know, parts that you can interchange, no problem. Uh, but this is the the the, uh, the serialized item. So this is actually considered the firearm here, just those metal components. But you can take them out, change out your grips. I, these, I think, these frames, these grips run uh, right around the forty-six to fifty-dollar range. Uh, so you can, you know, change them out for, you know, less than. 50 bucks and have pretty much a, a brand new uh, uh, polymer frame, which is probably something that a lot of people will do because one of the things I don't like about the SIG polymers is that it tends to scratch up very, very easily. You can see some of the marring that's already on there and this gun has not been treated um, roughly in any way. Uh, so, you know, if that bugs you guys, then, you know, then you might just want to have a beater frame and then one that you use for, you know, looks or whatever um, on the side. But uh, the texturing that SIG is doing on their grips, though, is fantastic. 
fantastic. It's not overly aggressive where it's uncomfortable, but it definitely locks your hands in place. I think it's probably some of the best texturing um, right now currently on the market on a, on a stock uh, polymer pistol. Really, really good. Okay, so let's go ahead and reassemble it here. So we're just going to put our barrel, which is 3.9 inches long, okay, so roughly a, a 4 inch barrel. We're going to throw that back on there and we're going to put our recoil spring right down in there. And we slide it back in place and we're going to lock it in the, in the rear position, flip our switch back over and we are good to go. So there we are. Really, really easy, fantastic takedown and reassembly. Uh, they've done a really good job with that. So what you get with the pistol is you get this nice little lockable hard case, which is always a nice thing, okay? And then you get uh, your paperwork, you've got your manual, um, you know, a couple advertisements or whatever. This is the receipt for this one. This one ran uh, $565. That's a crazy good deal for this gun. Uh, but uh, you get a loaded chamber indicator, a lock, and some a little tube of lube. And then you get uh, an extra magazine. So you have two magazines with it. And then you also get uh, this holster with it, which is really not a very good holster. It's kind of a, a, a chintzy Kydex, you know, thermal mold or whatever. Um, it does have a nut you can tighten up the the tension on it um, nothing really nothing really good but nothing really fantastic but at least it's something that it comes with so so that's that's kind of nice but uh, anyway so there there's what uh, comes with the pistol all right guys so let's talk a little bit about what separates this sig from other sigs and that is the trigger okay so this is really what this entire gun is based around is that striker fire option and i've got to say guys that this trigger is really really nice um, as you can see we'll we'll pull it up here we've got a little bit of uptake and there's a little click kind of in between there so there's a little bit of uptake and there it breaks. There's just a tad bit of creep right before it breaks, but the break is actually pretty crisp. Better than, I would say, a stock Glock trigger for sure. Uh, definitely. Definitely better than a Glock stock trigger. Now listen to the reset and watch it here. Okay, there it is. Really, really short reset. Not the crispest reset, but uh, definitely a good reset um, uh, in terms of actual length. There's the break again. I really like that it doesn't break really far back in the trigger guard so it doesn't pinch your fingers or anything like that. Again, let's look at that reset. Okay, it's audible but, but not, but not uh, very loud, okay? But all in all, guys, I gotta say that, uh, that the actual trigger feels to be, uh, it's actually a little heavier than you would probably think. I would say, Definitely uh, on the top end of six pounds for sure. It's not a, a an incredibly light trigger, but I think it's deceiving. I think that it it pulls a lot uh, lighter it seems than than it actually is uh, because it, it breaks very very nicely. And when I, and I've got to say though, when I'm actually shooting the gun, I think the trigger is is great. I would probably. You know, I would uh, definitely, I like it definitely better than a, a stock Glock trigger and probably better than a stock M&P trigger, which actually I like the stock Glock trigger a little better than the, the stock M&P trigger. So, so yeah, I think they, I think that the, uh, that the trigger on the SIG 320 is definitely better than Glock and M&P. I think all in all, guys, I think that SIG is doing a really good job with the 320. Again, it has that SIG overall function, which is a little bit of a chunky gun, higher bore access, but you know what? SIG just works and it works well. And for me, I shoot probably the, the, the most natural with a SIG than any other firearm out there. Uh, but again, I just couldn't get past that double action, single action. But now that they've come out with a striker fire, it's really opened up a whole new, new possibility for me with uh, SIG Sour. And I'm really, really happy about that. So, you know, guys, um, I really like the, the 320 and I think that uh, for the 
price, you know, they're, they're really competitive. You know, they're right around in the $550 to $600 range, uh, which is which is running right about the same as, as, a, as a Glock. You know, I think that you definitely should take a look at one of these. You know, they, they feel just really, really good. Uh, for me, they're the most naturally shooting uh, gun, and I really think that the 320 is a great gun. So anyway, guys, if you have any questions or comments about the 320, if you guys own one, let me know what you guys think about it in the comments section down below. If you guys have some experience, let us know because uh, it'd be really, really nice to hear uh, multiple opinions. But uh, anyway, guys, um, if you don't follow us on Instagram, you need to hit us up on Instagram, but we also are on Facebook, Twitter, and Google Plus as well. Uh, don't forget to like the video if you do like what you see, and don't forget to subscribe, guys, to the channel for more reviews uh, just like this in the future. And as always, guys, thanks very, very much for watching, and we'll catch you guys next video. See ya.